What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So we are in the dead throes of winter right now. Actually, it's super warm today here. It's like 75, sunny. Well, sort of sunny. Sunny over there. Clouds over there. So as you may or may not know, we got unseasonably cold weather here in the last couple weeks, down into the 20s, and it was sustained for enough time that it did do quite a bit of damage to palm trees and other foliage around here in the South Florida area. Foliage. So my biggest concern is this one foxtail. This one seemed to have gotten it a little bit harder than everybody else. Um, these other ones are fine, but this one in the front here just looks a little bit more dried out than the others to me. A little more damaged, so. I also don't like that it's been trying to send out some new shoots there or some new uh, fronds and that they haven't opened yet or that they're slow to open. That, that can be an indication of nutrient deficiency from what I've read. But uh, anyway, the key isn't necessarily the fronds or the leaves that you see. It's really the heart of the palm. The heart of the palm cannot freeze or get too cold for too long. If the heart of the palm dies, then the entire thing is going to die. And the heart of the palm is like right up in this area where you see the newer growth coming from. So kind of midway up. Now this one's been damaged from Hurricane Irma and then I think it had some nutrient deficiency again. That's why we got this these weird little you know growths on the top that are like malformed i believe that's nutrient deficiency so probably my fault neglect you know but i just moved here and that brings us to the next thing that i'm doing is because i started fertilizing these and look at all these weeds i mean you can tell it's winter i'm getting lazy like really bad i don't know probably no excuse yeah, i've been working my day job too hard yeah we'll just say that putting in too many hours at the day job you know, and then I'm looking at these big splits. I don't know if this is from too much water, not enough water, because see, I've had standing water that is right there because there's a dip. And so the standing water, I'm thinking this got overwatered. The standing water that was there. And anyway, so I attempted to fertilize this with some granular fertilizer and then I stained the sidewalk. And that was done down here. Now I got all the stains up here, but you guys know I've been doing a video on that the last couple weeks. Well, I had to come back here anyway, so uh, to get out of the noise. So anyways, what happened was I went ahead and fertilized that palm and all the other ones, and some of the fertilizer ended up getting out onto my pavers and staining them, so now I've been doing that, and that's actually a, a video that I did. I'll link in the description below to that on how I cleaned these fertilizer stains off of these pavers here and some other stuff that I'm doing with pavers. But anyway, back here are the palms that really worry me the most. I think the foxtails are going to be fine, but my arecas that you see down through here, these got really bad damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do some triage here. But man, I mean, the, the more days we have past the freeze, the worse the damage appears. You know, it's like, I saw immediate damage, but now I'm seeing the long-term damage come through. And then these guys here, these were planted quite a bit later. I'm trying to keep this out of the wind. These were planted quite a bit later over here. Um, they actually don't seem like they got as bad a damage, just the top, so I'm not so worried about those. Pretty nice on this end back here, no issues, but it was the front facing side here. I guess the wind must have whipped down through there or something, because that's where most of the damage is. And then I got those over there. But I mean, I had fertilized all these too, but man, look how nutrient deficient they look. I don't know, man, just look at that, just yellow. I mean, these, these guys just need some love. Look at that. So today's video is really all about that. I'm gonna start my palm tree triage, and I'm gonna use a little what I'm calling some juju juice, which is uh, just a funny way of me saying that it's kinda this new kinda way of looking at fertilization and soil health and things like that that I'm learning from guys that I'm reading like uh, Lawn Ecology from John over there at Green County Fertilizer and, and guys like that. I'll, I'll link in the description below to some of the stuff I've been learning and studying and then you'll understand why I'm doing some of the experiments that I'm doing and why I'm having a little fun with it and hopefully you'll learn too and we'll have a little fun making our juju juice. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this section of lawn with this, we'll call it this, uh, this philosophy. That's what we'll call it. I'm gonna use this philosophy this year, which is gonna be low furt, no synthetic furt, and we're gonna use things that we're adding to the soil, soil additives. That's gonna be how we run this year to make the soil more efficient so that we're optimizing the grass's use of what's in the soil. 
kind of hard to explain, but I think that's the best way to explain it. So the idea being is if you make the soil super efficient, then you're optimizing the plant's use of the soil. And so you should have to put less stuff, less fertilizer, less macros really, into the soil because the soil itself is more efficient and you've optimized the grass plant to use that soil. I think that's a good way to describe it. So the side benefit of that then should be that the plant can survive better when things like a frost or a freeze hit it or drought or anything else, you know, even disease, fungus, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the palms because I've told you I love them and they grow very similar to a grass plant. But since I'm here and I'm gonna be drenching these guys down and doing my thing, which we're gonna start today, I'm also gonna go ahead and do it on the lawn. So I think this will be fun. I got St. Augustine here. You can see the brown parts. That's some Bermuda that's invaded. It's, it's dormant. But for the most part, this is some fairly thick St. Augustine here. Um, so this will be fun to mess with back here. And I would also like to keep a little bit less fur on it anyway because the more it grows, the more I have to cut it and it's just clippings can get into the pool. So I would rather it grow a little slower anyway. All right, so the wind isn't gonna cooperate, so I'm probably gonna have to narrate over most of this, but I've got a little makeshift fill station here and I'm gonna move that around the yard. But for right now, I'm gonna hit that Alexander palm that you see behind me because it also got <clears throat> because it also got some pretty bad frost damage. So let's go take a look at that and get the befores. And then I'm gonna show you my mix and it's gonna be this way for pretty much all the palms. The only one that's gonna get a double dose of this is that large one right there. But the first thing I did is as soon as the freeze was over and it wasn't gonna freeze anymore, I went ahead and watered them heavily and I've been watering them every other day ever since. I also went ahead and watered last night just because I'm pouring this you know gallon of beautiful juju mix on there and I don't, I don't know, I don't want it to sit on top and get absorbed by the rocks. I feel like if everything's wet, it'll just help suck it down a little better. So that's kind of my deal. I'm sure there's a, a technical term for that, but either way, I did go ahead and water just last night. So everything is nice and wet. And then I just put a nice little wet coating on just a few minutes ago. Now it's time to put our juice in the roots. So I had some video of this one last week. It is definitely shown worse, but I'm, I'm confident that we're okay because see, we're green in here where the heart is. See, I think you can see that probably on film there. We're green, and this is the heart. So I feel good about it. It's just the the outer leaves are the ones that got damaged. So pretty sure this old girl's gonna be fine. She's a pretty one too. Look at her, tripled up. What's up, girl? You want to be careful. Some of these things can stain your your brick or sidewalks. Um, so you just want to make sure you're filling on somewhere where you can have control and catch everything, and just be careful. So the first thing you're going to notice is, is I'm going to run everything on a per gallon. So this, for example, 12 milliliters per gallon, one ounce per gallon, two ounces per gallon. And I always write it somewhere also on the bottle, preferably in a spot that's not going to get liquid on it when you pour. That way I can just remember. And this is going to be the same mix I use for soil drench, is the same mix that I'm going to use for uh, foliar spray, and is the same mix I'm going to use for the lawn. It's all going to be exactly the same. The only difference being we're not going to use this in the foliar spray. All right, so let's get started with what we're going to be applying here. And, and just for clarity, we're going to do two types of applications. We're going to do a soil drench, and then we're also going to spray the trunks and some foliar spray as well using a backpack sprayer. So the first thing we're using here is some sea kelp. This is cold water Viking sea kelp or Norwegian sea kelp. So I thought that sounded kind of cool. We fought well today. I was fortunate that he's all. You were favored by the gods. But the idea here is this is a growth stimulant. So I'm, I'm kind of calling this the base of the mix here. And I don't know everything that it does. I'll put some links in the description below to some things that I've read that I, that I trust. But again, this is a growth stimulant. That's really what we've got this in the mix for. This is gonna be two ounces per gallon. Next is the humic acid. Now this is one that I have in here because of the optimization that it does. From what I'm reading, humic acid is a chelator. And what that basically means is it makes other nutrients more readily available to the plant. That's why I use the word optimizes. It's optimizing the use of other elements that we're putting in and that already may be in the soil. This one is going in at one ounce per gallon. And some of you might be asking where I'm getting these mix rates. I'm actually getting them off of the bottles that I'm reading and I'm just making some educated guesses. The good news is here is you cannot over apply when it comes to hurting something. You can over apply and be wasteful, but you can't over apply and burn or damage anything here. So these are just my best logical guesses. 
All right, next you're gonna want some sort of liquid fertilizer. This is actually from Safer Brand. I didn't pay for this one. They sent me this a long time ago in something called a grow box and actually had a few different kind of fertilizers in there. I chose this one because these are hydroponic fertilizers, but they can also be used in the, in the application that we're doing here. And I like this because it'll dissolve really easily in the water. So I'm just looking for a little nitrogen here and I'm looking for the potash that we've got. So that's gonna be a solid, just general fertilizer that we're gonna use only at 12 milliliters per gallon. And I will tell you that this smells really bad because it's fish based. Either way, we're only using this in the soil drench. I'm not putting this on the lawn because of the smell and because I use malorganite in the lawn and I'm not putting it uh, on the trunks or anything like that. Again, this is just for the soil drench portion and it's just a small amount, 12 milliliters per gallon. Last is we're putting a splash of Super Thrive in, mainly because I am a superstitious Floridian now and everybody down here swears by it. It does have kelp in it though, so I'm thinking I'm gonna get a little overlap with what I'm already putting in, but again, who knows? It's Super Thrive, put it in. Just a dash. Now you'll see I make like a little assembly line here. Make sure everything is shaken really well, by the way. This stuff's gotta be shaken and in between fills you should shake it too. You won't see me doing that here because I edited it out, but definitely wanna shake in between fills. I, got a, I went ahead and got a 10 quart bucket here, which is two gallons and I fill it three quarters of a gallon up. And then I start putting my different products in and rinse everything out good. And I've got a stir stick here that I'm using. And what you'll notice is that as I'm doing this, I'm obviously adding more water. So the mix ends up being about a gallon and a half in some cases. And that's fine because we're soil drenching here. So some of my palms are a little wider. So having a little bit more water in the mix just helps me to spread it a little more evenly around the base of each palm. I've found that this 10 quart or two gallon bucket is the most convenient. It's not too big and too bulky and it's also malleable so I can get it down and around and bend it so I can do the pour a little bit more strategically and a little bit more targeted. I have no idea what my hair looks like. But anyway, anyway, I should not be doing this on a windy day, but I don't have a choice and this is not a chemical, so there really are no drift laws here or anything. But you do need to be careful because you never know what's gonna drift and stain a sidewalk. So be very careful here. But anyway, this is the next step. Next then, we are gonna use any old pump sprayer. Um, I've got a backpack sprayer that actually would do a lot better for this, but I'm gonna be honest with you, by this time in the day, I was super tired and I just didn't feel like lugging around four gallons on my back. So I'm using my pump sprayer here, triple rinsed. Don't ask me what I did with the rinse aid. Everything's all good. Now the mix rates here are still on a one gallon basis, but remember this time we've got a three gallon pump sprayer. So the humic acid, which is one ounce per gallon, we're gonna put three ounces into the pump sprayer. 
And the kelp, which is two ounces per gallon, means we're gonna put six ounces of that in. That's all that's going into the backpack. Now, if you do have a little bit of ready up potash like I've got here, um, then you could put some of this in. I'm just putting in two ounces of this into this three gallons. I don't wanna overdo this. Another quick tip, because you're not really mixing this in a bucket, it's going into a hand can, you, you could have a little trouble agitating. So what I actually do with the humic acid and with the kelp is I actually mix those into a one quart with a little bit of water, just a one quart bucket on the side, get everything stirred up real well and like a nice little slurry. And then I pour that into an already half filled pump sprayer. So that way I can ensure a little bit better agitation. And of course I do shake vigorously before I spray. Either way, we're gonna fill this up good and you're gonna coat the trunks of your palms as well as all up in and around the crown shaft. I really want this just running off in there. Just get everything coated, all of the, all of the fronds. You can coat the leaves too, but I'm really more about getting things into that woody pulpy area in the middle where everything seems to be growing out of. I really want that crown shaft to just be soaked with this stuff. I want it to get right in where I believe all of the work is being done and where I also believe probably most of the stress is happening from the freeze that we had. I also believe that this is the area where a lot of the freeze can really hurt the plant and really stunt it the worst. So I wanna get these good nutrients right on top, almost like a salve. Now, you're gonna to wanna to coat everything until it's wet. That's the application right here. Just coat things until they're wet. Now with the lawn though, I did go ahead and put this mix down at a rate of one gallon per 500 square feet. And that's about what I've got in the back here, about 500 square feet. So one full gallon of this mix on the lawn. you do want to water one more time this is not a heavy watering but I do want to go ahead and just continue pushing all of those nutrients that we put in that soil drench as well as what's run down off the trunk I want to continue pushing that down into the roots so just a nice watering to get it down now from here I'm not going to water the next day but I am going to continue my every other day watering or so and I'm going to repeat this process every three to three and a half weeks or so stay tuned to the channel follow I'll make a playlist out of this and we'll see how these do as well as the back section of the lawn that this year is only going to get treated with these applications again every three to three and a half weeks and just a really light Milo schedule so so with that I'm going to go ahead and end it here I'm Alan Hayne the Lawn Care Nut thanks for watching and I'll see you amongst the palm fronds <laughs>